Hello, floss tube. Sorry, that's my two second check to make sure it's recording. How's everyone doing? My name is Amanda. Welcome to my channel. My channel is mainly about cross stitch. I, I would say 99% of it is about cross stitch. I throw in a few other crafts here and there, but it's mostly cross stitch. So it has been a while again, uh, like a month, month. No, a couple months, maybe. I don't know. I can't remember. It's June 10th. I think it's June 10th today, uh, 2024. I'm sorry. It's been a while. I meant to come back shortly after short, so shortly after Stitch North, and I had an unexpected but not surprising, very sad life event happen. I had to put my cat down. Not like a chance. My other cat, Tigger. He was around, I, don't, I really don't know how old he was. He was around 15 or 16. I've had him for 14 years. He's the longest pet I've ever had out of all my pets. And when I came home from Stitch North, like he was fine before I left. And when I came home, he um, had stopped eating, drinking, and he couldn't walk. So we took him to the vet and it was determined that he had intestinal cancer and he'd, he'd had it for a while and we just didn't know. And um, yeah, we gave him some treatments just to see if he could perk him up just so we could have a little bit more time with him, but he was just not having it. He was done. So we said goodbye to him a couple of days after I got home, which really sucked. I'm still really, really sad about it. Um, Anyways, that's not what you're here for, but that's why I didn't come back right after Stitch North because I just didn't feel up to making a video. I actually didn't stitch the entire month of May because because I just was just feeling um, just feeling really sad. And normally when I'm sad, I just clean a lot <laughs> when I'm sad or stressed. So my house is very organized and it's very clean. <laughs> this room all got like a revamp. I reorganized all of the buckets and rid of stuff and yeah it's yeah they know me at value village because i've been there so much dropping stuff off so anyways but you're here for the stitching so what do i have today i didn't make notes i don't normally make notes because i feel like i'm just sitting down chatting with a friend and i don't really bring notes and and that's not a criticism to, to people who make notes when they do floss tubes i just don't because i just find it more organic just to kind of talk like I'm talking to a friend. So that's just how I do it. But with that being said, I may miss something. I may be a little bit disorganized. <laughs> yeah, so, but what do I have? I have whips. I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six fully finished things. I'm down to my last. I have one last item in my under the bed box. So if you watched my last video, you know I aggressively attacked my under the bed ba box, I think I finished almost 30 things, fully finished 30 things. So today is all the stuff that I got back from my framer. I had some gift certificates that I've been accumulating for years to my framer and I used them. Uh, and then I it did not cover the cost of all of it, <laughs> um, but I used them to frame these pieces. And then I have one more FFO that I did uh, the last thing in my box is Autumn Quaker, and I'm just not kind of, I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it yet. So, um, but it's going to get finished. Like, I, I can't go home this far without emptying that box. <laughs> so it's going to get finished. So I have all of my whips too that I've worked on this year. And before you freak out, it's only three. I've only worked on three projects this year, and a few ornament. I've got a few smalls mixed in here. So let's get started. I think I'll get started with the, I think I'll do the framed full finishes, pause and go hang them back up and then come back. So not that you needed to know that, but that's what I'm gonna do. So this was my full first framed piece and I'll try and get it so that the ring light isn't there. This is, oh shoot, what is this one called? M. There's, I think there's Sophie or Sophia's garden. I think this is Emma's garden, but I'm, I think I'm mixing up the name. I think this is Emma's garden. If you really want to know, message me and I'll just double check. Uh, this one, <clears throat> excuse me. 
This one was stitched on a custom dyed fabric from Sparklies. I basically sent her two Benjamin Moore swatches and I said, can you, and I drew her a picture and I said, this dimension from here to here, I want blue and this dimension from here to here, I want um, this color. And I sent her the swatches and she did an amazing job. There is a fabric that you can no longer buy. The original pattern was on, I forget what the name it was, but you were supposed to bleach the top half and then leave the bottom half, the blue. Um, that, I don't know, even if the fabric was still available, I think that would just be way too much work for me. So anyways, she is so pretty. Um, what can I say about this? This did, this did not take very long to stitch. The molding, this was actually my most expensive piece, which is bizarre because I have, way bigger pieces down there with matting and but this one was the most expensive I, um, I asked my framer i'm like is this like lined with gold leaf or something like is it <laughs> like you know can i cash this in when i retire like what's what's the deal here so anyways but she's she's beautiful i love her so that's the first one and then the next one is my Santa of the forest and I'll just go back here and this one is here's the molding here I I usually tend not to mat pieces unless I absolutely have to and that's just a personal preference for a couple reasons um, it makes your piece more expensive because you're using more glass more molding um, I also I don't know I just aesthetically I just like these pieces as standalone I don't use light mats on them but that's just my that's just my preference I've seen people mat them and it looks it looks beautiful um I checked this piece over I check all my pieces over before I send them to the framer to make sure I haven't missed any stitches and I had caught the stitches here that I missed but I don't know if you can see that one itty bitty bitty stitch like right there right here red that I missed and I'm not gonna lie it bugs me a little bit every time I walk by this piece <laughs> I just need to get over it anyways he is so this is Santa of the Forest by Lavender and Lace the last one was I think it was Emma's Garden by Lavender and Lace I don't know if I said that and he is stitched on Salt Rock by Color and Cotton a Lugana which I don't think she makes Lugana anymore I could could be wrong but I don't think she does where am I going to put these so they don't fall? Here, I'll put it over here. Okay, my next piece. Uh, this is Touching the Autumn Sky by Mirabilia. And I, I saw this and I was like, that's it. I saw it right away and I'm like, this is the frame that I want. Because, you know, if you can see these swirls look very similar to the shape of the leaves in the piece. And typically when I'm choosing a mat, and this is just how I do it. I don't know if this, this is like not, um, this is just what how this is just what looks good to my brain. It's not like a rule or anything, but typically what I do is I try to pick out a non-dominant Although there isn't really, I don't know, there isn't really a dominant color in this. But I pull out a color from two colors from the um, piece. So I was kind of aiming for this light yellow and this gold here for the mat. And then also, um, and again, this is just my brain. When I look at something, this is what looks aesthetically pleasing to my brain. Usually if I'm looking for a mat and a frame, if I'm going to do a light mat, I will do a dark frame. And if I'm going to do a dark mat, I will use a light frame. And the reason why I do that, if, if I, especially with dark, if you do dark and dark, I find the piece has kind of goes into a tunnel. I don't know. It's hard to explain. I find the piece closes in on itself when you do dark, dark, um, or even light, light. But I find it's really bad when you do dark, dark. So if I would have chosen like a really dark mat here, it would f f 
feel like the piece is kind of inset, like in the in the background as opposed to being in the foreground, if that makes sense. So I don't know. That's just how my brain sees it. That I mean, other people may be like, oh, I don't, I frame that way all the time and I don't see that. And I, it, again, it's just whatever is aesthetically pleasing to your eye. Well, there's that one. And then this one is a piece for my son. That's why I wanted to get it professionally framed. Just kind of loved this. Um, I know it kind of had like a bamboo kind of look to it, which I don't know. It just kind of, I, I found it just looked really nice with this mat and the piece. Usually I'll find something and like my spidey senses are like, oh, that's it. And then what I do is, um, because what they do is they have molding samples at the frame store and I just keep that molding sample with the sample of the mat board and then I'll just try a bunch of different ones and see if, if my eye just keeps going back to that one and yeah that's typically how I um, usually when I say oh that's it I don't just say that's it I will test it out and see what my um, where my eye goes when I try different moldings and this was it when um oh and this is um from the world of cross stitching oh what year it's during the pandemic so 20 it's one of the issues in 2020 but it's the cover issue so if you go to uh pocketmags.com they do back issues uh pdf back or not pdf it's through their app you can get digital copies of all the of the world of cross stitching back issues and he's on the cover so if that's one you're interested in he's handsome so there's that one okay and then my big big one <laughs> i got cinderella framed and I love the molding. I love everything about this finish. The mat, the molding. I was trying to pick out um, the blue from the castle and then the dark purple from the sky. Um, so that it's kind of, I don't know, just maybe an extension of the sky. But I've shown this before, so you guys have seen the, the finished piece. And this is a... Thomas Kincaid Disney Dream Collection kit, but I used none of the kit materials. The only thing I used was the pattern. I converted to DMC, uh, which looked a thousand times better because I did, I did start this, I've told the story before, but I started this project on a Zweiger at Lugana because I knew the MCG textile linen was awful and I wasn't going to risk. And usually in the kits, they don't give you enough. And then when I started, the flaw I the floss was just terrible it was shredding the coverage was bad it was dull so I switched to DMC and I was much happier with the result well there's that one okay so those are all my framed FFOs and I got those framed at a uh, local framer. I So I highly recommend if you are wanting to professionally frame your pieces, and this is just my experience, do not use a big box store. <laughs> uh, I used a big box store for years, but I knew the person who worked there. I knew she was um, a very, exper very experienced in framing. She worked in framing for like 30 years. And she also, uh, did cross stitch herself so she was very meticulous she knew how to stretch properly then she retired and i went back and i ended up with i was a bit nervous leaving my piece there because it was and no offense to young people but she, she was a high school student who was going to stretch my piece and i was like should i leave it should i take it so i did i did leave it and it was a disaster um, i was able to i took it back asked them to fix it they still didn't fix it. So I actually had to do it myself and fix it. And um, then I was like, okay, I need to find 
an independent framer. So I did. And the first question I asked him was, were you a framer in the 80s? And the reason why I say that was cross-stitch was huge in the 80s. And back then, people typically just framed their stuff. And he's been framing since the, I think the late 70s. So he had a lot of experience framing needlework and he does a fantastic job. He's, he knows how to stretch. Usually if I have a border, he'll tell me, he's like, oh, I can't get it perfectly straight. But when I pick it up, it looks perfectly straight. So I'll, I, I've never had a problem. He has a very particular eye. So he sees the imperfection when I don't. So, so anyways, that's my tip. When you're going to look for a framer, ask them how long they've been framing and if they framed in the eighties, <laughs> that's just, or you could take it to a needle workshop. I think they're more um, particular about framing, how they frame needlework and how they stretch it and whatnot. Oh, also one of the questions I asked him was if he used adhesive on the fabric and he doesn't, he uses, um, so he doesn't pin, he uses staples to staple it to the foam core board. Um, but some framers will use adhesive. Uh, it's, I think it's acid free and everything, but I don't know. I just, I felt a little bit nervous about them putting adhesive on my, on my cross stitch. So anyways, my last finish, um, is one that I did myself and oh, I don't think I took my stuff out of it. Anyways, I'll just show it to you. And then, so I had a piece that I was again, I was like, what the heck am I going to do with this? Like, I didn't really want to frame it. Um, I thought about a pillow, but I'm not really, a, I'm not really a pillow finish person. I don't have like a dough bowl or, and I have little kids and my kids would just be like, they'd be all over that kind of stuff. So I, I mean, I have pillows, but you know, I just, I wanted something I could display or something that could be functional. So that's why I like the, the drum because that could just be displayed on a shelf or, um, and this finish is, is functional. So anyways, I'll stop blogging and I'll show it to you. So I wanted to make a box uh, for this and then have uh, this as a box top. So this is, I'll show you the piece. This is uh, Brooks Books Little Women. And I made a box to for this one to go on top of it. And someone asked me, I showed this on Instagram, someone asked me, I hope you filmed a tutorial. And I didn't because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. <laughs> I literally just sort of figured out the first step. And if that worked, I just kept going on and figuring out the next steps. And I figured if at any point I failed at any of the steps, I'd be like, oh, well, like it was worth a try. So the first step in building this was I figured out like the dimensions that I wanted it to be based on the, the piece. And then I used my Cricut um, to cut out all four sides and the bottom. I layered it with two layers of quarter inch foam. I think in hindsight, I might have only used one uh, layer of quarter inch foam. And I had someone ask me where you get foam. I have only ever been able to find foam, quarter inch foam, at like a f upholstery store, fabric, not a fabric store. I haven't been able to find a fabric store. It's like specifically for upholstery. You get all different kinds of foams. Um, what else do they sell there? They, they sell like faux leathers. Like if you're reupholstering something, you can usually find foam at those upholstery stores. Anyways, um, then I covered it in fabric. Um, well, so on the inside of the, the first piece, I put double-sided stitchery tape and then what I did was I wrapped the fabric um, around the foam and then um, it's kind of like a present I kind of wrapped it like a present you can't see it because I lined I lined it um, so then after I did that for all four sides I sewed the front to the bottom and then I sewed this side to this side from the inside so I don't know if you can see you can't really see so that stitching is on the inside if it was on the outside you see all the thread going across but i stitched it from the inside and then i stitched this this piece to this piece 
this piece to this piece and then I stitched this piece to this piece but I had to fold it like an accordion so that I could get my needle in underneath that's why you don't want to sew the bottom you don't want to sew the sides to the bottom first because you want to be able to fold it in and out so you can sew that last piece together and then I went around and I sewed the other three sides to the bottom then and at this point I didn't cut out the top because I had to I wanted it to fit a certain way so I waited to cut out the top on the Cricut um, that was kind of my last step. Then what I did was, you know, there's stuff in here. Let me just grab this stuff because I'm using it. So. Then what I did was I, um, cut out, I measured and I cut out, um, the inside lining pieces and I just covered it with fabric. I didn't use foam and I don't know if you can see, but I kind of, it's a very, very, small ridge I left at the top so that the top of the boss box could inset in um, it's very spot I, I may only be like an eighth of an inch and I did that I don't know if you can see here the top now again I left this to the very last piece I just put in the four um, sorry five because I did one on the bottom too and that just covers up all the the messiness of the wrapping that you do here it just makes the looks like inside of the box look pretty and then uh, my only regret is I used bias tape as a hinge I, I wish I would have put uh, this underneath this layer here to hide it that's what I did with the top you can't see the the bias tape because I put the liner of the top side of the box over top of the bias tape um, I also did glue. Um, I did reinforce this with glue a bit so that um, the bias tape wasn't so flimsy. So then what I did was I measured, once I had the bottom all put together, I measured for the top and I had to cut out a few, I had this to cut this out a few times because I wanted it to kind of sit into the box. I don't know if you can see, see how it's kind of sitting in. And then when it's closed, it, it really seals nicely. So once I figured out the dimensions, um, I did the same thing. I covered the top with foam and then the fabric. And then I attached it to the top with the bias tape. And then I made, so before you put on the liner, attach the bias tape to the top. And then I made this corning, cording and I also glued that down because you want to hide all the, you know, the, the tail of your loop. And I just did that with measuring where I wanted the button. I put the button on too at this point just so I could figure out where I wanted the, um, the closure to go. And I just attached the button with that... Um, what is it called? The glue you use for uh, needle minders. The A, oh shoot, what is it called? Do I have it anywhere? I just organize everything and I can't find anything. Um, it's the needle minder glue. I'll, if someone's really interested in knowing, I'll, I'll let me know and I'll put the link to it below. But it's very strong and you can put the loop down over, oops. like that but see how it gives you like that nice inset closure so that it's I don't know it just kind of looks nicely finished that way um, so once I attached the top to the bias tape on the side and the cording for the closure and the button then I put the inside liner on and again you have to kind of leave about an eighth of an inch so that it kind of sets down in and then after that was done I just finished this like I would an ornament made some cording and slapped it on top so I looked everywhere for box tutorials I couldn't find anything uh, so that's why I I mean, I much prefer to find a tutorial and have someone tell me <laughs> how to do something. <laughs> so, 
Uh, I don't know if I'll do this again. This was very labor intensive, but it was kind of a neat finish. Oh yeah, and then what I did too was I had um, trim from, uh, what is it called? The Celebrated, I'm just looking at it there. The Celebrated bundles you can get at Michael's. So you get all kinds of different trims. I had two pieces of this and I just covered the bottom seam because this is like a rough edge of like whip stitching. Put it all the way around. I didn't have enough to go all the way around. So I just cut a little piece from the second, um, the second piece of it and just slapped it on. It's in the back, you can't see it. But yeah, there's one of my finishes. So sorry, I, that was kind of a long winded explanation, but someone had asked if I could explain how to how I did it. And so that's why that kind of took a bit of a, a bit longer than what it should have. <laughs> okay, so then I think I'm gonna show you my whips which again is not really that much. Um, so my first whip I'm gonna show you, I started this as a sal with uh, Amber Rogue Mama Stitcher. It's called the, uh, I'm gonna screw up the hashtag. Mice, mice with fashion sense sal. I think that's what it is. I'll, I'll link it below. And I'm stitching, uh, this one right here, it's a mouse sewing on a spool and it's from this chart here which I can't pronounce and I think I I think I heard someone pronounce this I think I think it's Veronique Ingenue Ingenue if you're a French tell me if I'm not saying that right I always said in ginger but I think it's Ingenue I don't know. anyways this is my very minuscule start there's her Head and her the top of the sewing machine. This should not take long. This should be finished by now. I don't know why it is not finished. It's on a 36 count. Um, it's a linen by, it's not Zweiger, it's not Witchell. F fiber, fabric flare maybe. I, yeah. And I, I tried sulky threads because I thought my stitches, um, cause I like to do two, when I do ornaments, I like to do two over two on 36 count, but it's a little bit like chunky. Like my stitches don't look lay as nice. So I thought, well, I'll use these, is it 12 weight? Yeah, 12 weight sulky. Cause I've heard people say, oh, you only have to use one strand. I actually think this looks messier because it's not really one strand, it's two strands. I don't know if you can see it's two strands wrapped around itself. So when you do a cross, it looks like your, your stitch is kind of all twisted anyway. So anyways, I used DMC for some and then the Sulky for, for a few other ones. So anyways, Mice with Fashion Set Sal if you want to join the Sal. Um, and really, it's just pick a pattern that has a mouse wearing any kind of garment. Heck, you could have like an animal, just an animal wearing garment. It doesn't have to be nice. But then that doesn't, the hashtag doesn't make sense. Anyway, stitch a mouse. Use the hashtag. And then, okay, let me move this so it's in a safe spot. Um, where can I put this? I'll put this back here. There we go. Um, then I've only stitched on three large projects this year uh, because I'm trying to get some stuff finished. Uh, the past two years, I've just kind of gone hog wild and started a bunch of things without really kind of working on them. So I have a lot of stuff that has like maybe a couple hundred stitches in it, but nothing to the point where it's close to, well, no, I did have a few things that were to the point of close to completion, but you have to work on stuff to complete it. <laughs> so I haven't started any that's not true. I started one big thing this year, but pretty much I have not started anything big this year um, because I'm trying to finish some stuff. So this is one of the ones I'm trying to finish. This is my second oldest whip. It is Lady of the Mist by Mirabilia. We have a visitor and he's getting into mischief. Come on, get down, get down. Hold please. Okay, I'm back. I dealt with a petulant child and now 
Um, I also hung my stuff back up, so it was, I killed two birds with one stone. Um, what was I going to show you? Lady of the Mist, that's what I was going to show you. So there's the pattern. And then I'm using my mom, mother's old, I couldn't find my board. So I'm using her old sewing mat that she gave me. It may look kind of weird because the green may show through. Anyways. She is not done. <laughs> Almost though. So let me step back for this one. Pretty much all of the stitching is done. Uh, let me check. Not all. Of, I still need to do the back stitching on her arms, but pretty much all the stitching do is done. I think since you last saw it, I've stitched all of this. I finished this. I don't think I had her head in. I need to go back and just, f I think there's a few little spots I have to fill in with stitches and then the rest is just beading Then she'll be done. And I have to say, I don't know, Maggie, you can, you, you can be the judge, but I think she would give Big Bertha a run for her money because she is, she is big <laughs> and she's on, she's on 28 count, Summer Sky Jobelin by Witchell. But I think looking back, or if you were interested in stitching her, I would su suggest maybe a 32 count just to make her a tad smaller because she is, she's a big girl, but she's beautiful. So it's that one. So I'm hoping to finish her this month. I was going to do a uh, monogamous Mira May, but then I just lost my stitchy bug. I didn't really want to stitch for the reasons I mentioned. Um, she needs a bath though too. I think I'm going to try and wash her. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm going to do um, like a test swatch in the corner to see if the fabric will bleed, like the fabric will, like the dye in it will go all funny. Hoping not, but she just feels, she feels like she needs a bath. Um, the next one is my stocking. This is by Dimensions. It's Victorian Bear Stocking. I've made really good progress on this. I've only worked, I think I only worked like 20 days on this. I've made really, I think the last time you saw it, I only had like a little bit up here and I've done basically all of this here. Um, and I'm gonna come down to the toe and finish the toe and then go back and this up here is half cross stitch with like four and five strands. I'm not really looking forward to it. That's the one thing I don't like about newer Dimensions kits is they, I've gone the route of using like five. I, I've actually done a Dimensions kit where they use six strands for a half cross. The older Dimensions kits don't typically do that. The most I've seen is three, maybe. I mean, you don't have to, but I don't know. It just gives it that, just gives it a certain look. Like it gives it a little bit more texture when you use the different, different number of strands. So the last big whip that I worked on, I had big plans for this. It's my oldest whip. I was going to work on it all this year, get all the beading done, all the stitching done, except for the last house, which I was expecting to be released in 2025. I was going to stitch the 2024 house when it came out, get everything done, start beading so that by next summer, I just have to stitch the last house. I'm talking about my Mill Hill Christmas Village. Well, I don't know if you just saw the Witchelt Christmas releases for Mill Hill. There's no house. <laughs> there's no, there's no house. So me kind of in panic mode, not panic mode, but I, I emailed Witchell and I was like, are you going to be releasing a house this year? I just thought, well, maybe I'll just double check. And then I also asked, is the series like, is, is it, is it finished? Like, are you guys not making them anymore? And I got like basically two words, no house in 2024. No, it's not finished. That's it. That's all they sent to me. So is there going to be one next year? Who knows? But so anyways, basically, which will peed all over my plants. Like they just took a giant whiz all over my plants. So I have options that I'm contemplating. 
I don't know, you guys can weigh in. Let me show it to you first. I don't know if I'm not going to be able because I've made a ton of progress on this. This is probably the one I've made the most progress on. Here, I'll do what I always do. Hold it up. That's a, the project there. It's pretty much the bottom row is done except for the beading. And now I've worked on, I'm working on the last column over here and I'll show you a close up. And I just had a giant water floss fall out of something. I wonder if it's for that. I don't know. Hmm, that's concerning. Uh, okay. Just get to the bottom row. They had me scared at Stitch North. I took this to Stitch North to work on the border. And they're like, are you going to be able to fit that on your wall? Will it actually hang on the wall? And I asked my framer and then he showed me some pieces. He's like, look at these like giant mirrors. Like they're massive and they're, they weigh like probably 10 times the weight of this piece. Because I was worried about the weight of the beads too, right? Um, okay, let's start on this side. So he said it would be fine. I just have to put it into a stud. Okay, so the last time you saw this, I had only had this part done, I think. So I finished this and I screwed up a stitch somewhere here. It's one stitch off, so I had to do a lot of finagling on that one. But it's finagled and I did the back stitching. I think I had this one started the last time. I think I only had this uh, part of this done. I don't know, It's but it's it's done. My my husband, uh, we were talking about this like door here. I'm like, what is that? And he's like, oh, that's where they keep all the dead bodies. So now I, this is like the serial, serial killer lives at the general store and he keeps all the dead people in here because <laughs> it's like a freezer door or something. Anyways, I thought that was kind of funny. And then I started this one here, uh, the post office. And the only change I made was I left off the American flag. I'm not sure if I'm going to go in and put a Canadian flag there. I just, at the time, I didn't feel like um, charting something. I just kind of wanted to stitch. So I thought, well, I'll go back and deal with it when the time comes. And then, okay, post office. This one is the clock repair. I started and finished that one. This is the country church. And then we have the train depot, which really bugs me because I wish there was a train at the depot. I think that would have made this piece way more interesting to look at, but there's that one. And then I did go back and I finished because this one wasn't done yet. It looked almost done, but it wasn't. Just the stitching on the firehouse and I backstitched it. I still have to go back and do backstitching on almost everything on this row. And I think one or two on the row above, so I have to do that. And and what I did was I moved over to the top and I started the schoolhouse, which is not, there's not a whole lot done on the schoolhouse. Oh, actually there's a fair bit done. And then I did all that border down there. I don't know if you can see it. You probably can't see it. The border, because there was no border along the bottom. So, my options are to complete all the stitching except for the last two, work through all the beading, and then as they come out, either next year or the year after or whatever, stitch them in and then once those last, or once the last two that I'm going to do come out, I'll, um, it'll be done and I'll frame it. The other idea I had was, and I may still do this because I like this idea, I, I really want a pet store and I don't think they're going to do a pet store because for the Christmas village, because they have one in the Main Street village. And I did think about converting some of the Main Street village ones, but they're like a completely different era. Like this is more kind of Victorian-ish era. era. Well, maybe not, I don't know. That era is more kind of like 1950s and it has lots of flowers and spring theme stitching in it. So like to convert it, I might as well just like rechart 
something entirely. My, the other idea I had was to convert some of these. So this one, I considered taking this one and removing this, removing the shovels, um, removing the hammer, and taking the windows from the pet store in the Main Street Village series, because all it is is it's cats and the little dog in the window. There's nothing like springy in them. And putting those in there uh, and have a pet store and remove the hammer. And I bought, I did buy a bone button from just another button company from one to three stitch, putting it there. And then changing up the color of the house was not similar to the hardware store. So that was the first conversion I thought of. And then the next conversion I thought of was, and this one I'm less kind of, I don't know, I'm less kind of sure about it, was to take the bookseller, this one here, and remove this off of it, and remove the cats and the this here. I don't know what I put in place. And then I bought two candy canes and have like change the color of the house and I have two candy cane buttons that will go on either side of the door and then I have like a little gingerbread cookie and have a candy store so that was the other idea I had but then I was like but what if they release something really cool or really neat or really different I don't know so my one idea is just to stitch as much, as much as I can, beat as much as I can, and then hopefully if they bring something out next year, um, put that one in. And then I think at that point, if all the beating is done, I may just put in the pet store. Because um, if I go ahead and put the pet store in and they release a pet store next year, I don't want two pet stores. so. I may do that. I may just wait the year to see what they release next year. If they release something next year, hopefully they do. And then finish it off with my pet store idea. That's kind of where I'm at right now. It's kind of killed my motivation a little bit to work on it. Um, so I'm just trying to get I'm like, okay, what can I do so that I still finish it at my the time I wanted to finish it at, which is next summer. And I think that'll work if I stitch the last, the next year's release in the spot, one spot, and then the pet store, or my pet version of the pet store in, I think, I think that'll make me more enthusiastic about working on the piece. Cause I really want it done. Like I started it in, when did I start it? 2019, started it the end of 2019 so it's you know it's 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 up there I want to I want to enjoy it I want to enjoy it on my wall so so then the only other things I worked on were very very small things which I'll show you what is in here um, I worked on this no hill and it is like I think that was an evening so I need to get that one out and just finish it. I'm not starting any more small things because I have too many small things on the go right now. Uh, and then I had this project I started this year. This is the Spirit of Colty Angel Ornament. Sorry, I'm already at 43 minutes, so I'm gonna try and whip through these. So here it is here. I contacted a Wonderland Ukraine to see if they would make me a custom size. Uh, um, this is like a, and I'm sure you guys have seen it, a magnetic frame that you can put your perforated paper in. And I asked them if they could make me a custom size and she said, sure. So I sent her the dimensions and they made this one for me. So, and it didn't take super long to get. It took longer than uh, these frames that they make because these are, I guess, just already ready to ship. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. And then this was another star that I made. This is Jingle. It's uh, Debbie Mum, I think. Is it Debbie Mum? I don't know. I think it's Debbie Mum. It doesn't say. And I got a good start on him, too. That 
one. And then this one. Oh yeah, this one. I had this idea to, um, so I'll show you the, the pattern. It's this pattern here and I'm stitching this one here. And I had this idea, let me just show you the stitching first. So basically, again, this is only like one or two days of stitching. It's like the scarf right here. Scarf and a bit of his coat or her coat, his coat. I don't know. Um, I had this idea to put it in this frame that I found um, and put it in with my teddy bear display at Christmas. So oh, that's not cute. And I have a bunch of frames. When I say a bunch, I think I have three or four from this series. And it's the, what is it? I think it's just called Traditions. They make Christmas ornaments too. I have a set of their Christmas ornaments that are bears. There's one with a, a bear that's a Santa and there's one with um, two little bears and there's toys on the shelf. There's Raggedy Ann and Andy. And I was gonna put this Santa here, the one I just showed you. Where is it? This Santa, or sorry. That's why I stitched that one on fabric because I'm gonna put him in there. I don't know, I just thought that was cute because this is supposed to be like a window. So Santa's outside the window with a bird. So I thought that was a cute idea. I'll stick that one there. Uh, and then the only other, is that it? I think that's it, yep. Yeah. The only other thing that I have, and I'm going to restart it. So I went to um, my friend Kim, who's Crafty Kim here on Floss Tube. She hasn't made a video in forever, but she still has like, oh, she's got hundreds of videos up. So if you're looking for a new Floss Tuber that doesn't have new content, but has a ton of old content, um, you can go over to her channel. But she does a stitch day in the city that I live close to. And she did like these little goodie bags and she kitted up. Um, this isn't all the stuff in the bag she had. Where's the other thing she had? It's over here. She makes these little, like, I don't know. I, I, she's, she may and gifted another one to me. I put my keys on it. She put one of these in the bag and then she had this little thing with candies. The candies are gone. And then a little strawberry needle minder. And then she kitted up this project. It is called Mouse's Strawberry Jam and it's by Tiny Modernist and then give us all the floss for it. And then she did a draw and I won one of her draws. So this is one of her project bags that she made. The cute little mice on it. And I was the last number to be drawn. She had four prizes. And I said to my husband, I'm like, I can't believe nobody picked this bag. I thought, you know, being the last person that this bag would, would have been gone. But then my husband pointed out, he said, you know, most people don't like rodents. <laughs> It's like, yeah, true. <laughs> but they're so cute. Like, I don't like rodents either. Like, when they're in my house, they eat, like, a special food and then they go off and die somewhere. But, like, I don't know, on fabric and on cross-stitch patterns, I love them. They're so cute. But I don't like them in real life. So, but I have to restart it because I slipped a stitch here. And then I thought, oh, it was late at night. And I was like, oh, forget it. I'm just going to go over three on one stitch. And then the next day I looked at it and I was like, oh, that looks like crap. So I'm gonna restart it on this side of the fabric because this is a long piece. It's more than that. So I'll just restart it. So that's the only thing, other thing I've worked on this year. I did work on some other things this year, but um, they were in my finished parade, my, my last video. And I thought I would show you this thing. I got this at the stitch day. She has, um, vendors that go so sometimes Shiba Design will vend at her stitch day sell project bags um, Cheryl Tiny Modernist will vend at her stitch day and she has this other lady who I've bought stuff off of on um, Etsy it's called Anne's Crafts and this is her Etsy store I hope that's not backwards it's backwards for me but hopefully it's not backwards for you and this is actually one of her gr uh, grime guards that I bought 
at Stitch North. It's got little cats on it. I can make this, but I just don't want to make it. Like, this is not fun sewing for me. And her prices are really reasonable. But anyway, she made this little... It doesn't look pretty because there's lots of floss in it. It's probably overstuffed. But for my um, Brooks Books, uh, where I'm pulling, like, I need, like, 10 stitches of this floss. And then I... I just pull it out of my master and then I'll put it back when I'm done with it. Um, but it's this little, um, I don't know, like box that she's sewn. And then you just can fold it back up. It looks prettier when there isn't, it isn't overstuffed. And then you just throw it in your, in your project bag. So anyways, I thought that was kind of a neat little doodad. I got a little scissor. Oh, what is it called? You know the thing you put on your scissors? What is it called? Here it is, here. The matching scissor cover. Cover. Scissor cover? Is that what it's called? I know there's like a special name for this. Somebody's gonna tell me in the comments, I'm sure. So yeah, Anne's Crafts on Etsy. So that is all of my whips. Um, what time are we at? 51 minutes because I, I I haven't really been buying a ton this year. I did I did buy some stuff at Stitch North because Rolanda or sorry, Rolanda was at Stitch North. So I did buy Rolanda fabric, but I, I put that away. I did buy some bags from Melissa at Sheba Designs. Uh, you guys like you guys have told me like long videos, so just put me on two times the speed and then it'll be half as long. So uh, so I'm going to show you uh, just a couple things that I bought. Um, it's not everything, but I haven't really bought, oh, actually this could be everything I bought this year other than the stuff I bought at Stitch North. So anyways, I'll show it to you. Ugh. Where can I put this? Pull my chair out here. I'm not going to edit this video, so you're just going to have to put me, put up with me moving stuff around and okay. So some of this is stitchy kindness too. So this is, is this everything? That, yeah, I think so. Yep, yeah, okay. Uh, so Stitch North, um, some of this is stitchy kindness from Stitch North and for my birthday and from Christmas of last year. Um, my birthday was in January, so it's been a while. Um, so maybe I'll show stitchy kindness first. So my birthday, stitchy kindness. Um, was uh, Catherine Neilberry Stitcher knows I love this designer and she sent me the new um, I don't know why I'm looking for the name of it I won't be able to say it anyway it's basically the um, what is Elizabethan is this the Elizabethan era anyways it's all really beautiful because if this is your first time watching me I want to stitch um Fancy ladies for a fancy lady tree. And this one. Oh, these are so pretty. I love this one. With the, like, fan behind her head. The one thing I think about, though, and this sounds kind of gross, the one thing I think about with this era is how bad these ladies must have smelled in these big dresses. Like, they probably smelled so bad. And someone already explained to me, I said, I, I, I mentioned on when I showed another one of these charts, I think it was the southern bell series like how do you go to the bathroom in these dresses and someone actually you can go back on the video and you can see her long explanation of how they go to the bathroom it was very interesting how they they manage using the facilities in these dresses but anyways so that was really funny okay and then this one is the santa alphabet uh, i love this one here oh Oh, and this one's cute too. I would just that one because the deer. So, it's from Catherine. Stitch and Bestie. Um, and then Stitch North. Now I'll talk talk about Stitch North. So what was Stitch North? End of April. And I got to see Catherine. I roomed with Catherine Needleberry Stitcher. And I sat with uh, Fiber Arts Amy and um, Stitch and Shorty. Uh, um, Ashley also sat with us. 
and Ali's Yeast Crafting sat with us. Uh, and then we had, on Friday night, Melissa from Shuba Design sat with us, and then on Saturday night, my friend Crafty Kim sat with us, because they were helping, well, Melissa was vending, and then Kim was helping um, vend for Tiny Modernist. So, one of the gifts that Amy did for us, Barbara's Amy, so she is the dyer uh, at Oak Crown Studios. She um, created fabrics for her company and she named them after us, everyone at the table. So this was mine. And this is a uh, 32 count um, Lugana, or sorry, 28 count Lugana. And it's, I don't know if the camera is probably not, it's washing out a bit, but it's greens and blues and a little bit of yellow. And it's called Lucky Chance. Isn't that cool? I was like, oh my goodness, I've never had anyone name anything after me. It was so, well, it's not me, it's my cat, but, or my channel, I guess. But that's so cute. So you can actually go on her website and you can buy this fabric. And um, she also had the, she, she brought fabrics. Um, she did not bend, but she did um, bring fabrics just for her friends to look at to see if um, we wanted to buy anything. And I was like, yes, please. So I ended up buying, uh, which one is, yeah, this was her fabric of the month for um, Firefly, Firefly Fairies, which is a um, lavender and lace pattern. Man, where's her hair today? But it has the starburst in the middle. And there's this whole, um, Thing you have to do there's instructions on how to put bleach on the fabric and all that but she's actually created a fabric uh, that you don't have to do that you can just buy it from her and I believe I don't quote me on this I think she has this on her website it was a fabric of the month uh, it's called firefly so go go to her website and check out see if she she does actually have it this one is called daydreamer Again, I don't know if this one is on her website yet. So she said some of them were on her website, some of them weren't. That one was pretty. Daydreamer, and that's 32 count linen. linen. And then this was my favorite. This one is called, well, I love them all, but I, I really, really was drawn to this fabric. Uh, Lurking in the Woods, 28 count linen. I thought Cathedral Woods Goddess would look really good on that got blues I don't know if you yeah you guys are seeing the blues and the greens it's really pretty so that's what I bought from from Amy um, so I had a really fun time hanging out with her and then um, Ashley gave me a candle that my son stole <laughs> He loves the smell of the, it was like a fragrant, uh, I think it was like lavender. Anyways, my son was rooting through my, <laughs> my bag and he's like, I'm going to take this. Okay. So I didn't, at the time I didn't really want to like go through a, like a big ordeal. I've talked about my son before. You would know why I would go through a big <laughs> ordeal. So I was just like, okay. Cause he just was sticking his face in it like all day. I told, I told him to ease off. I'm like, ease off of Ash's candle, man. <laughs> He's getting high off the lavender. Anyways, he cleared a spot on his dresser and it's sitting on his dresser. So I'm sorry, Ashley, but my son's really enjoying the candle you gave us. Um, and then um, Catherine also brought... So we decided to exchange Christmas gifts uh, at Stitch North because we were afraid our Christmas gifts would get lost in the mail. And I told her... I. It can't get lost in the mail because I can't re easily replace it. So that was the only th hint I gave her. And she said, me too. So we decided to exchange Christmas gifts. Um, where is it? It's Stitch North. And she got me the Santa stamp. And she's stitching this right now. So I was like, oh my goodness. I couldn't believe it. I don't have this one. And it is out of print and not... I don't know how easy it is to find on the secondary market, but... He is handsome. So thank you, Catherine. And then she also, we were chatting on Instagram back, when was it, like in the fall? No, I don't think this fabric came out then. I don't know, we were chatting on Instagram and I was saying, oh, I really like the 
uh, Teresa Colgate, the bunny fabric, but I couldn't find any sellers in Canada selling it. And it's not something you can get at like just fabric land here. And for me to ship it up from the States, it was just like for a fat quarter, it's like almost like $50 to ship a fat quarter from the States. Like it's, I don't know why it's, I don't know why it's so expensive. <laughs> so anyways, she, as part of my Christmas gift, she bought me the Teresa Colgate fabric. So thank you. Yeah, I was so excited to get this. So I'm going to make some bags out of that. Catherine, I'm going to make some bags out of this. Anyways, she knows what the wink wink is. Okay. Um, and then she went to Queen City last year. Uh, and at Queen City, you could get two things signed by Nora. And so she used her second because I was not able to go to Queen City um, last year. And she used her second signing to get me something. So that was very kind, Catherine. Thank you so much. If you're not watching Catherine, which I'm sure you are, um, go watch Catherine, Needlebear Stitcher. Um, I think that's it for Stitch Nora stuff. Is it? Is it? Oh no. I want something at Stitch North. That was the other thing. So it was so funny because we went to dinner and we we're talking about draws and we were, I, I think it was actually Amy and I were like, I, I said, I don't want it. I never want anything like with, in draws. And she's like, yeah, me neither. And then we go back and does, don't I win something? And then doesn't she win something? So the funny thing that happened, okay, backstory about this, I was sitting beside my friend Allison and I said, oh, you know what the key to winning, because I was telling her the story about what happened at Stitch North, how Amy and I said we didn't, we don't, we never win anything. The thing that you got to do is just say to your friend next to you, yeah, I never won anything at these things. And then you win something. So she had four prizes. Allison won one and then I won one. And there was like probably like 50, 50 people at this thing. So it worked. It worked both times. So anyways, I, w I ended up winning this bag. Um, it's got stuff in it. Um, from the sewing shop. I think it's the sewing shop. You know, it's cute little Australian animals. The So the funny thing is, is Amy, because uh, they would announce what they were showing and then they would draw the, the number and Amy's like, oh, I really want to win that because it had a Victoria sampler pattern with like the embellishments that she really wanted. And my name got called and I got the pattern and it was just something that Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to knock you guys. Uh, it was something that I would never stitch. Like it was just not my aesthetic and, and she was really excited about it. So I was like, here you go. You, you will enjoy this way more than, um, than I will. But I kept the bag cause that is totally me. Cute little animals wearing party hats and what else are they wearing? Birthday hats. And then he's got like this little winter hat on, which is kind of weird. Cause do you guys, do they get winter in Australia? Like, I know they get winter, but like, do they get snow? I don't think so. When I lived there, we never had snow. So there's that one. So I think that's everything that, um, like stitchy kindness and everything from Stitch North. Um, I think so, yeah. So then I guess I'll show you a couple of my purchases. What are we at? Yeah, I should be done in like 10 minutes. Okay. I did buy this from the sewing shop. This is before I want a bag from them. Um, this is from the sewing shop and it has its vinyl front. It had these cute little animals on it. And what's the little zipper pull? Cute little deer. Um, because these are really good for, oh, now I'm just thinking, I wonder if this could hold a 17 by 17 Q-snap. Hmm. Interesting. Anyways, I had put, I put a project in here. Um, cause I'm kidding. I was kidding up some things, but I'm going to actually see if I can put a 17 by 17 Q snap in there. Hmm. Okay. So I got that. And then what else did I, what else did I get at Stitch North? But, oh, I got this from Evertote. I've never bought anything from Evertote before, but I saw this and I thought this was really, cu really cute. I'm going to cover up the price tag. Um, in case my husband ever watches this video, he won't though. Um, it's called, um, in the Dale. And it is by Gosford Rise Stitchery. Is that Gosford Rise Stitchery? I've never heard of them before, but it kind of has a prairie schooler vibe to it. Um, I don't think I would finish it that way, but 
the birds and the ducks. And um, if you know me, I have ducks. Like, I, I love ducks because we get ducks every year in our pond. Little mallard ducks. And it came with all the Roxy um, Flosco. I keep wanting to call it Leo Roxy. It's not Leo and Roxy, Roxy anyway. Roxy Flosco Flox. And it came with Ada, but I think I might... Yeah, I'll probably switch out the Ada. It didn't, they didn't have it in linen. They just had it in Ada. But anyways, I thought that was cute. Um, so there's that. And then I think... Oh, no, I got this at Stitch North. Um, I really enjoyed doing the felt applique. So I thought I would uh, get in a... Um, well, it wasn't on my mind. But when I saw the book, I was like, oh, I need to get this and learn how to embroider. So it's got a little hedgehog and a deer. The hedgehog was what, what kind of... Um, drew me to it it's got these little uh koala bears those were really cute i just really enjoyed doing this the specialty stitches that one and i got this from key mat designs i think uh, there's this one with the fox fox and the i'm not big on the octopus those winter animals are kind of cute oh yeah and there's this hummingbird one that was really cute pretty there's one with a, um, there's tons of animals in there. There's an elephant. I won't show all of them because we'd be here forever. There's bunnies. This one's cute. But there was a cat one in here that I really liked. Um, oh, there's a cute little frog one. That one's cute. And it basically step-by-step -step shows you how to transfer the pattern onto your, um, your muslin and how to because all the patterns are in the back of the book where's the cat one these ones are cute squirrels uh, that's cute sorry i know this is boring i'm trying oh this is cute the little sloth cute that's the squirrels I already showed you that one. Oh, this was the other one i really liked when i saw it so cute the otters i'm kind of obsessed with watching um three okay here's the cow one uh, let's see if there's a better picture of it showed you the hedgehog yeah this one here and that's what my cat tigger looked like so i thought that was kind of kind of fitting that was the one that sold me on the book and the fact that he's gone now I think that's I don't know I'd like to think that's what he's doing right now is happy in a field of daisies so uh, I think that was it oh there's a little panda anyways um if you like animals I think this was well worth the I think I paid like I don't know what did I pay for it as a price $28 for it it's $19.99 in the U.S. and it is called Animal Embroidery Workbook by Jessica Long in case you want to look it up so I got that at Stitch North I think that's everything from Stitch North I'm sorry I'm just trying to make sure I um and then at the beginning of this year I well I started chatting about it with Catherine we were kind of going back and forth showing each other um, design works kits with mice on them and then um, it kind of spilled over into me showing amber <laughs> these kits well when I found this one I found this a picture of this one but then when I went to do a search for it like it's it's not a print and but I came across the shop um, and they had it as listed for sale and I thought oh you never know like I'd never heard of the shop it was kind of you know, in the recesses of the internet, I thought, oh, is it safe to buy from this place? So anyways, I I ended up, and they don't ship to Canada, so I ended up, I asked Catherine, I said, can I buy this and use your address and you can bring it to me to Stitch North? And she said, yeah, sure, that's fine. So it was only like $17. So I thought, well, if it doesn't exist or the shop isn't in business anymore, I'll, like 17 bucks isn't that much to risk. Because I couldn't find this anywhere. I'll show you the kit. It's called... Uh, Christmas is so special, like S-E-W, because they're sewing. So it arrived. Catherine sent me a note. She's like, oh, it, it, the shop is 
is not a fake. <laughs> Because you know how you're just kind of like, is this a real shop or not? I, that's kind of the feeling I got. So, yeah, so I thought that was really cute to add to my mice collection. And then, this was like just in April? No, May. In May, I was like, oh, I'm going to go back and take a look. Because her, her shop isn't set up very, um, it's not very user-friendly. Like, it's not like she has drop-down memory menus where you can look up stuff. Like, see, like, oh, I have this you know how like at, on one to three stitch they have categories where you can go to cross stitch patterns and then by theme and by designer you really just it's just a search bar you have to just be able to s search for something like know what you're searching for so I thought, oh, i'm going to see if she has any other like kits because i'm into kits and i have one kit that it truly is a unicorn i've i've only ever seen it once i saw it at ac more years ago when i say years ago it was like 2012 maybe I had it in my hand, but I had other stuff in my hand too, and I had to make a choice, and I ended up putting this kit back. It was a Bucilla kit, and what I didn't know at the time was Bucilla didn't do very many uh, production runs of their kits, so there's certain kits of theirs that are very, very rare, like the Bucilla Heirloom Collection kits are very rare. Um, they go for a lot of money on eBay, and some of them don't ever even show up on eBay. Like, I've never seen this one come up on eBay. I've never seen it stitched. Even if you do like a search for the picture, like you, like it just doesn't come up. So anyways, I did a search and I just typed in Bucilla and two kits that are hard to find that I'm looking for came up and they came up as in stock. And I was like, okay, well, the other one was there. So I gave it a try and they weren't like, they weren't ridiculously expensive either for out of print kits. So it was this one, the Bucilla Heirloom Collection. Uh, it's just called Santa, and it's uh, Ruth, uh, I always mess up her name, Moorhead? Yes, it's by Ruth Moorhead, and it's the Santa with these cute little kitties and dogs. So I was super excited to find this, because this was my unicorn, and I just kind of given up thinking I'd ever find it, because I've been looking for it for, for years, and I just kind of gave up. I'm like, eh, it's, it's... It doesn't exist. <laughs> it just doesn't. <laughs> so I was so excited to find it. Well, then when I was looking through the Bucilla kits, um, this one came up and I've been looking for this one too. This one is just called um, Gifts from Santa. And again, it's another Ruth Moorhead. So I have, a f I have a friend who actually started this not too long ago. And she had been looking for a long time too, so that one so yeah those were some pretty cool finds she has a lot of um i searched her dimension stuff she has a lot of like hard to find things not a lot of it was not in stock though but there were some that um yeah i didn't quite understand the pricing because some that i thought would have been a lot of money weren't and then others that she wanted a lot of money for i was I was kind of confused because I didn't think they were super that rare, but who knows, right? Like, um, she had a lot of out-of-print Mirabilias. Um, what else did she have? Design. She had a lot of design works that I had never seen before. Um, so anyways, yeah. It's little, little, little gems <laughs> hidden in the recesses of the internet, I guess. Um, okay, what else did I get? There's only a couple more things. What are we at? 13. Okay, um, I'll show you these things quick, quick. I got the new Madame Butterfly. And I got this RTO kit. I think I got this shortly after my cat passed away. I don't know, I had that on the brain. It's called Silver Morning, and it's um, by RTO. And then this is one I've been looking for for, looking for, for a while. I got that one. That's Amy's Roses. And then... I found these. I've never... I've, I saw these on Instagram. And they're only partial kits because at one point they came with the frame. But this one only has the pattern and the floss. Both of them only have the pattern and the floss and then the cover sheet. So this one is a designs work. And it, it came with um, a frame too at one point, but the frame didn't... I, I probably wouldn't use the frame anyway. 
It's called Old Hearts and it's by Design Works. And I thought that was so cute. I don't know if I would stitch it all. I, I probably would just stitch the seam with the mice or this as an ornament. I don't think I would stitch the, the All Hearts Come Home at Christmas. But I thought that was really cute. I saw someone stitching it on Instagram. But I wasn't really able to ever find it. And it came up it came up with this. And it came up like this one and this one were a lot. And this one was really cute too. I've never seen this one before. This one is called, same deal. It was supposed to come with the frame and the fabric. But I only got the floss and the pattern. What is this one called? Mr. and Mrs. Claus. Yeah, that's all it's called. So there's the floss. And, and it says... Uh, Christmas, uh, the season of love. It's Mrs. Claus with a little cat. I thought that was cute. So, there's that. And then for my birthday, um, I got some kits. Oh, wait a minute. This wasn't my birthday. I got this uh, Vermilion Stitchery Angel Cat Ornaments. These are cute. And then for my birthday, I found... Um, kits on eBay and I've been burned on eBay before so I did some research and I actually contacted the seller to ask them some questions um, these I got from the Ukraine and I was not familiar with these brands at all so I did some research to make sure like they were like le legitimate companies and they were so I'll show you this company first and I'm sorry like they're not oh this one I think is in English but these ones aren't distributed in the U.S. like um, Mareshka and Luca S. Like you'd have to buy them from a seller on eBay who is in the U in the Ukraine or Eastern Europe. Um, this is Olanta. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Olanta. And I don't think... Oh yeah, it does have it in English. New Year's Express. And if you can get these in North America, I'd, I'd love to know. But I didn't see these. The, the one big seller of... European kits is Wizardi, uh, wizardi.com, and I didn't see these on that website, but I just love the bears and Santa the train. That was that was cute. And then I don't know if this is the same designer, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Claus, the same brand. There's lots of detail, but I just love the little orange cat there. And I don't know, I'll show you these ones on the back. Some of these are really cool. I didn't obviously get all of them, but that Santa is really, really cute. And it, oh, sorry, these ones come with Zweigart Even Weave, I think. Yeah, both are Zweigart Even Weave, so it's probably good quality. But sorry, I'll go back to showing you this. There's a Santa with a bird. That's a nice little Christmas scene, and that nativity is really cool. The cats. Yeah, that nativity is really pretty. It kind of reminds me of the Dimensions one, though. I, I have a the Dimensions one, Holy Night nativity. And this kind of reminds me of the Sandy Little John's scenes that you can, the patterns you can get. And then this was from the same company, this angel, what's it called? Angel of Christmas. That's pretty. And then this was another, um, I'm, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this, and there isn't a word of English on it except for DMC and Zweigert. It is... If you go to colorova.com, it's this one here, the angel with the baby, and it's on an 18 count uh, Navy Ada, which is Zweigart. Everything was Zweigart linen, which is wonderful. I wish all kit manufacturers use Zweigart. Uh, and then this kit is, so, these were two different sellers and the one seller I asked her about this brand and there was some language barrier so I didn't quite understand what she was saying until I went to the website and I thought okay this is probably what she means but this is um so you know how like at um what's it called what is the place called that does the craftways kits oh Hirschner's. So you know at Hirschner's, Hirschner's has their own brand, which is Craftways. So there's like a Hirschner type store in the Ukraine 
that sells Dimensions. I saw Dimensions. I saw Bucella Felt Kits. There were all sorts of these brands as well. Um, but then there's this brand. And what I think she was saying was this is their... So because they're like a Hershner's type store, this is their brand of kit. I think that's what she was trying to, to say to me. Um, and it is not in English at all, except it says counted cross-stitch kit on the bottom in English. It's kind of strange that these are part in English and like not, like the name of the kit is not in English at all. So anyways, this is their brand. I don't know what it's called. Um, I can't even tell you what the name of their brand is. Momentus Magicus, or I don't know. I'm sorry, I can't give you more information. Anyways, they were all legitimate kits. Um, I've kind of learned what to do now to make sure that because they didn't show the actual kit, and because I hadn't heard, they, they weren't indicating a brand on the listing either, which is also kind of a red flag for me. So typically, I'll do a little bit more research, like ask the seller questions. If the seller isn't really forthright with the brand, then that's like maybe another red flag. Um, these sellers were very forthright with the brand. I just never had never heard of them. So that that's it. That's everything. I can't believe it. An hour and 20 minutes. I apologize that this is a feature length film, but again, watch me at two times speed. <laughs> I guess I should be telling you that at the beginning of the video, not at the end of the video, but if you watch things at two times the speed, it goes, it's half as long. So yeah, so I won't keep you any longer. Uh, my plans are just to keep working on these whips, the ones that I showed you, try and finish them up. I'm going to try and only work on, uh, like two or three larger whips at a time. Um, I know that might be hard and and not start anything i've only i have start i am going to start maybe a couple of these kits this year um just because i don't know i like starting things it's fun um i'm also going to go through um my whips i may do that actually today i'm going to go through my whips and organize them that was the only thing i didn't organize in my craft room i have like a big mass of project bags in these shelves over here and I haven't looked in them probably some of them in like two years I haven't even looked in the bag so I don't even know what's in them and I'm going to organize them between uh my kitted things because I think some some of it's just kitted stuff I can like finish not this year but like it won't take much to finish them pull them out and then pull some out that um I kind of want to replace the whips I'm working on once they're done with, pull those out and then UFO some things. And when I say UFO, just like put them away. UFO is not a good word. I heard a word the other day on Floss Tube. Uh, archive, maybe, is that a word? That's the word I've used. Or deactivate or, or make them inactive. They're not active anyways. I mean, some, some of them literally have been sitting there for two years and I haven't looked at them. <laughs> so they're technically not active, but yeah, I may do like a quasi whip raid. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Oh, I did want to do some shout outs because I have um, found a couple people that I've enjoyed watching. Uh, one person who was on Flosstube, I think a year ago, and they left for like family reasons and things like that. And then came back is Wendy at Wendy's Whimsical Stitches. She stitches pretty much everything. Um, she stitches Chatelaine, she's stitching A Year in the Woods by Cottage Garden Stamplings, she's stitching them all in one big piece of fabric. She stitches a lot of smalls, and the one thing that's great is she's pretty good at fully finishing her things. Like, I don't, I don't know, I could be misspeaking, she may have like a big box that she's not telling us about <laughs> that's not fully finished, but she, like the past few videos she's had, she's had fully finishes, um, almost every video, so... Um, anyways, go check her out. I really enjoy her videos. I'm very, very glad she came back to Floss Tube. She's also doing felt applique too, which is really cool to watch. Uh, and then there's someone else that I watch, but I'm, I think I'm going to mess up her name. Shoot. Jen's Fiberweb. And her name is Jen. So I remembered her channel, but I'm like, what's her name? What's her name? Her name's Jen because it's Jen's Fiberweb. <sighs> It's okay. I'm going to be okay. 
So yes, that's where I got the idea to go through my whips and sort them all. She's doing it a bit differently. She just did a whip raid. She is going through her whips and pulling out everything she thinks she can finish this year. I won't be able to do that because I don't really get, I don't really get a lot of time to, to dedicate to stitching anymore. So um, I'm going to pull out the ones that I think are close to a finish and sort of work away at them. But yeah, go check her out. She uh, just came onto Floss Tube, I think this year, beginning of this year. I could be wrong. Anyways, go watch her videos. She has a nice variety of projects. Um, she also did a finish parade a few videos ago where she shows all her finishes. So anyways, go check her out. Anyways, I'm going to sign off. I will see you. Uh, well, I'm going to do a whip parade. So I'll see you when I do my whip parade. Okay, take care. Bye.